Shut up and sit down. Hi there. My name is Allie McKittrick. I am the director of the Hazleton Art League. And for this June 1st Friday, we're going to have Mark Rooney be our special featured artist. And so I'm here with him um, six feet apart. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Almost. Not quite. To have an interview um, to ask some of the questions so that when you see his show, you'll have a little bit more insight to Mark and also to his work. Um, so, so, Mark, when did you know that you were an artist? I get asked that question a lot. If you're an artist, you get asked these questions a lot. I started my first body of work. Well, I must have been five or six years old. And my father, and this is in the 50s, used to get his shirts back from the laundry and they would come with a piece of cardboard behind them. So he would give me the cardboard and the, I started, like a lot of people, started copying cartoons. So I did Huckleberry Hound and Beetle Bailey and Superman and Batman and mm -hmm. that was my first body of work. So I knew from the beginning I had some sort of inclination toward art, but I must have to thank my mother because she encouraged me a lot. Mm -hmm. So birthdays, Christmas, she always got me art kits of various kinds. So, and I got a lot of compliments, oh, that's really good. You know, this is when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, so, of course, I kept it up for that reason. Then all through high school, uh, I painted, I was sort of known as an artist. I painted the Beatles and things like that, I painted and drew, but I never thought of seriously pursuing a career as an artist. So after I got out of high school, and that was in the early 70s, I was kind of a hippie like everybody else, so I sort of played music, hung out, didn't really think about a career. Mm -hmm. Finally, after a while, I thought, well, maybe you need a way to make a living. Mm -hmm. um, so I enrolled in art school. I was living in Philadelphia at the time, and I enrolled, or I applied to several art schools, got accepted at Tyler uh, School of Art in uh, Philadelphia and went for four years there, studied in Rome, and that sort of launched my career as an artist. I love art. I am an artist. It's in my blood. I love teaching art. And so the end result is, and so I've done it all of these years, and I've survived through my art and through being a college professor. Mm -hmm. But I kind of joke, although it's not a joke, I always figured I'd be a starving artist. I didn't count on being a starving art professor, <laughs> yeah. but that's what I've been right. for 35 years. But to make a long story even longer, I started with, with when I was a kid, and I've kept it up all of these years, and uh, I haven't made a lot of money from it. I have shown my work a lot and gotten a lot of feedback and haven't made much money, but I've done it my whole life, and I'm grateful that I've gotten to do what I enjoy doing uh, throughout my, my entire life. That's excellent. Thank you. Um, so you have very interesting work. If you see the body of work, it is it's clearly driven by some sort of inspiration. So what would you say inspires you most with your work when you decide, this is what I'm gonna to paint today? Is it a, um, where do you come up with the ideas? That's a very good question. And I have a, 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 a simple answer and a more complex answer, but the simple answer is I paint life. Okay. All of my work is very autobiographical. Okay. So I, over the years, I paint romance, I paint nature, I paint work, I paint politics. I basically, the but my, you know, the content of my work is, is life itself. It's very narrative in that way. I tell stories. Now, the way I start my recent work is, and, and, and the, uh, technically, my work is abstract expressionism combined with realism. Okay. And I've always done both, although I lean towards abstract expressionism, but I also paint and draw realistically. So right now, I'm bringing those two things together. And, and the abstract expressionism I've done for a long time, I'm very good at it. The realism, I'm getting better at, but I start with the photograph. Okay. Another myth that I've heard a thousand times is I love to dispel, that's so real, it looks like a photograph. Oh. Now that's completely false, yeah. and it's very important because anyone who knows photography knows that 95% of the photos we look at mm -hmm. every day are not real at all. So my first step oh. is harvesting photographs and usually from the media, I don't, I rarely take them myself, so I usually get photographs from the media, but the first step is finding a photograph that is realistic enough for me to portray it realistically. Okay. So I make a ground, as you see here, these are the grounds, this is the abstract expressionist part, then I paint realistically over top of that. And the themes start just by a photograph that I find, okay. whether it's Aristotle or 
uh, friends of mine or fashion models. Yeah. I need a good photograph okay. that is realistic so that I can paint it realistically. Mm -hmm. So that's where I start with the ground. The ground suggests composition. It suggests the mood. Some of the grounds uh -huh. are sort of dark or vibrant. Some okay. of them are quiet and soft. So the ground suggests the mood of the piece. Yeah. Then I simply choose a photograph that I want to paint and I start painting it. At that point, a theme kind of develops okay. and usually a title occurs. Okay. And then I start to arrange the symbols based on the theme. Okay. It's important though that my works are very narrative, meaning they tell a story, but I don't. But there's also a mystery there, and I think okay. that's the imp important thing about art. I don't want to make it too simple. Here's what this piece is about. Right, right. I don't want to make it so obscure that people look at it and shrug and go, "I have no idea what it's about." Right, right. Okay. So I walk that fine line between telling stories, but keeping the stories open and ended enough that, as Marcel Duchamp put it, the viewer completes the picture. Oh, so I have something I like in mind, but yeah. the viewer can see what they see also, and that's the, that's the process that I'm, I'm working with right now. Well, doesn't that sound exciting? I love this. This, <laughs> this is good. Um, so when you paint, so it sounds like you start off with, your, your inspiration is an image or something that's going on at the time, you're painting life. Um, so, and then you kind of develop it as you're going along and, and themes will, it's almost like carving the rock and you sort of see what the painting wants to say. It sounds yeah, like. that's a good way um, to put it. Yeah. So how do you feel when you paint? How do you feel when you're coming, like are there different moods for every painting? Like, my personal mood, I mean, I, I don't want to, like I said, my work is autobiographical, but so I don't want to go too much in, into my life story, but a few, 20 years ago I I call I converted to happiness. I, like that. <laughs> so yeah. I used to be a gloomy yeah. existentialist, and that wasn't yeah. much fun. And I won't go into the details, but at some point I changed my way of looking at the world. So when I paint, I'm like always I'm I'm pretty happy when I paint. Yeah. As far as the moods go, though, some are quieter, some are more meditative, some are more exuberant. Okay. Uh, some go a little bit to the dark side because again, that's part of what life is. As far as my actual mood though, the mood that I get into, it's sort of like a trance, the mood that I get into when I paint is extreme concentration. Okay. So I don't really have like an emotional mood, but the main thing that's very important is when you're working eight to ten hours straight, the little paintbrush and a piece of wood or what have you, you need to focus. Yeah. So that's yeah. the way I would describe my mood when I paint, is intense, okay. intense, almost sort of meditative, zen-like maybe concentration okay. and this is the mood that I have to foster and it, it's it comes upon me when I first start I'm a little more playful etc yeah. then though I start to zero in and then like a laser I'm focused for hours on what I'm doing so that's how okay. I would describe my mood when I okay paint. that's fair that's good um, so let's jump into some of the paintings that we're gonna that are going to be on display at the Hazleton Art League's uh, virtual gallery exhibit in June so some of these, uh, I looked over your work, I mean, it's, it really is beautiful, it's very moving, it's interesting, there's just a lot of details, you could look at any piece for a period of time and it's, it kind of speaks to you, it's really great. Um, so there's one you have called Welcome to My Garden, mm -hmm. and um, there are what some might consider some darker symbols, there's a skull in there, there's a couple serious faces of the woman, and there's a gorilla, um, but it does seem softened with the doves and the tiger lilies. Um, can you tell us about this balance in your own life? A little bit of darker and a little bit of lighter. Is there, do you see that in your own life? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I see that in life yeah, itself. Right, right. And okay. uh, as far as the skull, that's called a vanitas. It's a long tradition in painting. It means a reminder of death. But it, in my case, I don't mean it in a morbid sense. And okay. specifically in that painting and in several paintings, I will add skulls. I add the human animal, I add other animals, but mm -hmm. it's, and, and you know, I consider myself an aspiring Buddhist. Okay. So most of the work is about that. It's about the recycling of life. Oh. So in other words, there is death, but then frequently there's a baby also. So it's this, what I believe is that you, you're born and you live your life and then you die and then you start it all over again. Okay. Uh, so it's, and it's not morbid, the skulls are not morbid, they're really just, meant to be a, the life cycle from, from birth to death and then repeating that cycle. Great, excellent. Okay. Um, I find your piece, Temptation, to be very intriguing. It looks like it has clear roots to Adam and Eve, but the male figure is a beagle. 
Um, can you flesh this out for us? <laughs> sure. <laughs> and again, I, I warned you, my work is very autobiographical. I consider myself, an, I call it an aspiring Buddhist now, but I was raised Catholic. And yes, you can take, as they say, you can take the boy out of the Catholic Church, you can't take the Catholic Church okay. out of the boy. Okay. <laughs> so there are a lot of uh, Christian symbols like Adam and Eve, and that's a very apt reading of that piece because it's called temptation. Now, it's about temptation in a bigger sense. Again, you can interpret temptation the viewer any way they want to. Yeah. Uh, but it's since I put the apple, it's e easy to see the Adam and Eve. Now, is it specifically, and is the dog the Adam figure? <laughs> I would say prop, that's a fair reading. However, the, what the dog represents is innocence. Oh, so when you're about okay. to be tempted, yeah. another thing kicks in and okay. you start to think about the temptation. So the dog is sort of big-eyed, innocent, yeah, yeah. Uh, sort of almost before the fall, let's put it that okay, way. You know, good. the yeah. innocent, that's what the dog really represents. Okay, so. you guys have to see that piece, it's great. Yeah. Um, and then and then we have, excuse me, um, Tiger, Tiger, Burning Bright. Mm -hmm. It is very dynamic piece. Um, I, I understand it was inspired by the William Blake poem? Yes, the title in particular. Oh, uh, okay. I, and I'm familiar with William Blake. I, I love his work and certainly the spiritual aspect of both his artwork and his poetry has inspired me for many years. Um, but in that particular piece, yeah, I, I saw, so and you know, I come up with the title sort of halfway through the piece and I just kind of, okay. like I said, relate it to what you see there. There's a tiger there, there's an Asian woman in that particular uh, piece. In general, though, what all of the pieces, first of all, I'm very ecologically minded, and I do think we are going through a crisis of uh, the destruction of the planet. So my point is, I like to put animals into my oh, picture. Okay. I like to put various types of people, especially other ethnic or various kinds of ethnic yeah. uh, people, what have you. And I don't want to, you know, I, I avoid stereotypes. So Asian woman tiger, that might be a little bit of a stereotype. But to tell you the truth, mm -hmm. I started with the tiger. Then I had a photograph with this woman. I thought yeah. that's perfect. It goes well, yeah. And then I put it's it all balanced, together because it has yeah. the one side with the very colorful, and the other side it looks like the jungle a little bit with the tiger there. I mean, it kind of ha it really does have a very balanced. In fact, I was even thinking it's sort of like a yin yang kind of feeling because it's a little darker on one side, a little lighter on the other, and then the way the the figures are placed even has that. That's it's. It, well, I love yeah, that interpretation. Yeah. <laughs> like said, the viewer completes the picture. <laughs> You've done your homework. Now, <laughs> I can tell, and that's a beautiful interpretation. A lot of the work is about a duality, absolutely, okay. the, a kind of yin yang or happy sad or again this sort of cycle. So the way you just interpreted it was perfect, absolutely. Oh, wow. But I start again with. You know, I find photographs, and especially animals, I love to portray animals now, mainly for an ecological reason, but also they yeah. make great subjects. So yeah. the gorilla, for example, in the previous yeah. picture, is, you know, and the tiger, that's where I start. But it's really it all is meant to symbolize that we're all in this together. And if anything, I try and paint the, the other animals, not the human animals, them too, but the other animals in a sympathetic way. Okay. So both the gorilla and I think the tiger are kind of looking out at the viewer, at the world, and human beings, and say, saying, "What have you done? Oh, <laughs> why, why did you do this to us? Why are you ruining our planet?" So in both cases, that's what the animals more or less represent. Yeah. Okay. Well, speaking of the animals, our next one does have an animal too. Um, wild as the wind. There's a cute little pig looking off, at, in in the distance. Tell us about that one. He well, he really grabbed me. No, well, that's interesting. Uh, you know, again, I collect pictures of animals, and uh, I treat all animals the same, you know, I, human or pigs, what have you. I don't have a particular bias that some are good yeah, animals yeah. and some are bad animals. So I What's just, the story in that painting? Because it really does look like the it's story, telling a story. Well, there. the story that evolved there, and again, I don't start off with the story. I don't try and illustrate an, okay. a story in my mind. I started yeah. with the pig. The pig gave me a lot of trouble because I work on very sometimes very rough grounds, and especially if you're trying to be realistic, and this yeah, is deliberate, the and, yeah, I almost difficult. subvert my intentions. Okay. So unlike a Renaissance artist, I don't choose the smoothest, perfect uh -huh. surface. I choose, and again, this is a metaphor for life. Okay. I choose very rough surfaces, okay. like in life, and then try and overcome wow. this roughness. Did you guys you hear that? That was, that was really good That's the metaphor. Life, That's I why like that. I use the grounds. One of the reasons I use the grounds, it's my metaphor for life. Life is rough. 
And we all struggle, but we try and make order and beauty out of the struggle. I like that. The pig was very difficult, though, because that ground was very rough, and it was a pink ground, so not, not very wisely. I thought, I'll put a, a pink pig on a pink ground. <laughs> not a good idea. That's well, called, it looks that's like called figure ground, so the point is, <laughs> I had to get this pig to stand out from the ground. Uh -huh, so, so I really yeah. had to work this pig because I wanted to be realistic. Now, so the ground, sometimes a lot of them also suggest landscapes. So I painted the pig, but I saw this landscape as almost like a rural setting. Yeah, it did look like that. That I saw it sort of as like being out in the country, and that goes along yeah. with the pig. And there was a little suggestion, I didn't paint it, but of a house. Oh. So the next figure I added was this woman. And then I added the tree, and it's the story there is, in it, and I, the title comes from a Nina Simone, a very famous Nina Simone song oh. called Wild is the Wind. Okay. And I just thought of it, as, so the theme kind of emerged as this woman in the country exerting her uh, freedom, if you will. That there was something about this isolating, isolated setting and her kind of breaking out. Okay. And, and that's wow. more or less the theme. Again, I don't want to yeah. be too specific, yeah. but that's how I came up yeah. with the title. I thought it was a, a piece about freedom or sort of breaking yeah. out of yeah. your uh, confined existence. That's a great, great theme for the times, really. But it yeah. does look like that. It looks like this wide open piece. It does look like this wide open, and the pig is pointing in the other direction. Mm -hmm. So it, it kind of shows look to the open space. It's it's. Something it's a like perfect, that. Yeah. Perfect time I mean, it seemed like a wild setting in a way, yeah, as opposed yeah. to an urban. You can let's almost say, feel or, the wind in that one. You yeah. really can. This wide open. I love Absolutely, it. yeah. Um, so, lastly, I wanted to talk about uh, Adithi. Did I say that right? Adithi. Yes. Okay. Um, it it is a really powerful piece. To so that one, um, I felt like I could feel the emotion in her eyes and her body language. I mean, it seems strong to me. It looks like she's trying to tell us something, and what do you think that might be? You, that you have to ask Aditi, to be oh, completely honest. Okay. Aditi is my student. She's from India. Uh, she was at my student at Penn State uh, for a while, and then she went back to India. I chose Aditi's picture, the same thing, because it was a beautiful picture. It had nice lights and shadows. I mean, that's the first step, finding a photograph that is good enough to paint realistically. Yeah. So I found, I had this on Facebook, I were friends on Facebook, I found this picture of Adithi, and of course I asked permission. I said, can I use this photo to paint? Yeah. And she said, sure. So to tell you the truth, I just painted what I saw there. Oh, okay. And that's... that's did it, it seem emotional to you? Yeah. Was that, well, did that strike well, you as emotional? As far as that goes, yeah. It was, you know, whoever took the picture sort of captured this aspect of Adithi that I liked. Okay. And it was good lighting and all of that. But there again, it was the background sort of suggested a kind of forest or rural setting, so I kind of pushed that a little bit. Okay. And she's looking straight out, of, out of, at us, and she's a very pretty young woman with big eyes. Yeah. So I, I, I guess what I'm saying is, maybe. yeah, I, I was sort of doing a portrait of her, but yeah. what she's thinking was in the photo. I okay, can't speak fair. for what Aditi is thinking, yeah, that's fair. but it just came out that way. I do agree, though, that it be became a very thoughtful sort of pose. And I do edit a little bit. In other words, if someone is doing this, I might make them do this, or yeah. vice versa. Yeah, so I yeah. kind of set it up that she is looking out mm -hmm. at us in sort of a soulful way. But that okay. was really a result of the process, rather than something I deliberately tried to capture about Aditi. Well, great job. I, I just want to say I really appreciate your pieces. I appreciate you taking the time for this interview. Um, I hope you guys do come out, or well, actually, you won't even have to come out. You don't even have to leave your house for the show because it's a virtual gallery show. And I hope you take the time to look at the pieces and really, um, maybe there's something you want to purchase. Everything is for sale. In fact, we also do have an auction that we're going to be putting together um, that will run for one week starting that first Friday. I will... Um, showcase that piece a little earlier so you can start making your decisions on what you want to do um, to to bid on it it's going to be a silent auction and that will start on june uh, 5th the first friday of june and it'll run to the following friday of june 12th um, and i will uh, provide you with that information as we go along probably the monday before that first friday um, and thank you so much for watching and we want to see you at that show we want to at least see your name um, show up in the comments or somewhere. And, and thank you, Allie, for a great interview. That, uh, that was right. great. I look forward to the exhibit. So, uh, And if anyone has any further questions, just contact Allie or me, and I'll tell you directly.